Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Asbili Tala, and I would like to um, welcome you to Gotta Run with Asbili. And f uh, today we have as a special guest, Will Sanchez, who I'm substituting for today. Hi, Will. How are you? Thank you, Asbili, for having me. Well, it's a terrific opportunity to have you here on uh, the weekend for uh, right before the marathon. So this is great, and uh, I see you brought with you, you know, um, chicken soup for the soul, and you have a special uh, short story in it. I understand. Yes, it's short story number seventy-seven, in fact. And it's called "Running and with Joy," right? Yes, yes. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, in uh, two thousand and eight, I was uh, running New York for the second time. And my good friend, Joy Johnson, was running it for the, I believe, for the 21st time. We were having lunch in New York because she was in town for the marathon, and she asked me if I would um, pace her because she wanted to right. come in under six hours. Age she was in the uh, 80 to 85 age group. So she's a streaker, meaning that after nine you'll become a streaker, right? Actually, after you have to hit twenty to 20. be a streaker. A streaker. So well, she certainly qualifies for that, right? And she got a special T-shirt that says "Streaker" on the back. That's uh, fantastic. And she didn't wear it the first time because her granddaughter objected to that term. But the second time, uh, the twenty-first time that she's running around, she wore the shirt, she said she didn't care what people thought of her because of the word streaker. So she ran it, uh, the year that we ran together, she wore right. the streaker shirt. Pacing, that must have a lot of things to prepare for, you know, do you have a plan? Um, right yes, yes, that's a good question because uh, I learned, I, well, fortunately, I've had paced other people uh, because I'm a group leader for the Galloway Running Group, and as such, so I do have practice in pacing people. It's a big responsibility. It is, uh, especially when you're dealing with someone of joy. Although she's in her 80s, she's very competitive. In fact, uh, she had, uh, if you read, when you read the story, you can, at the beginning, you see she ramped up her training because she had a competitor that year, a, another woman warrior from an earlier age entered the 80 to 85 group, and she was a champion in the prior age group. The joys of, <laughs> you know, making it to the next age group. You know, it's really interesting because you can be the fast, the, you can be the slowest on your current age group, and you become one of the fastest in the next age group. Right. That's right. That's so. right. Uh, and so Joy was always fast, uh, but uh, but uh, she really enjoyed uh, you know running New York. So how did that race go? Did it pull, uh, play out well, as you um, had hoped? It, it, it was very interesting because Joy was uh, full of pep and energy at the start. Uh, we all nervous energy. Well, she had it. She was like a pacing tigress. You know, she really wanted to get out there and just run. But of course, you can't do that. Uh, you have to run smart. And I don't know where I got, gained this wisdom, but all of a sudden I said, no, Joy, we have to agree to hold back. And by that, I said, we're going to jog for two, for two minutes, right. and, then, and then walk for a stretch. So really work on the strategy from the beginning, so it pays off at the end. That's right, that's right. Because we had lots of opportunities to, to screw things up. <laughs> right, so were there a particular part of the course uh, that you had either a big high or, or you know, yes. a real low? Yes, well, Yes, we had both, a big high and a big low. The big high... <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't the Verrazano Bridge being the no. <laughs> big high. That was, it just started off well, and, and Joy uh, respected the discipline. She always mm -hmm. did, but, but she realized that the strategy was going to work. That's um, 
And we had other people around us that were encouraging us. So that was, this is New York, so the fans right. were out there. And, and he already had a, a group of fans because the Wall Street Journal actually um, uh, did a story on her. In fact, there's, there's a picture of her that came from the Wall Street Journal. We can show it up at the back room of her um, that shows her, you know, in, in the track. Now, there she is. So that's Joy Johnson, taken by the Wall Street Journal in 2008. Uh, and I've probably it's taken the track in, uh, in right. California. Yeah. So she's an amazing uh, runner. But she's very gifted, for one, I mean, to be running at. Well, I've got some funny stories about that. Uh, but anyway, th we're talking about the high. The high was when we hit the uh, 59th Street Bridge. As you know, Mile 16. Right? Mile 16, and the bridge is, you know, you, you hear it just roar on the other side because the other side is First Avenue, and the bridge right. is, you know, it's just a bridge. So and it's so actually a very silent part of the, uh, of the, uh, of the run, I that's think. That's right. It's very silent because you're, you're running up the bridge, and they have the red carpet there to help you. Uh, so we're running up the red carpet. And uh, we can feel the excitement. If we hear it, the steady roar, you know, it's this hum. Right. And people, of course, are looking over the side to see what, what's going on. And of course, First Avenue is this. Uh, as, you keep, as you start to really hear the crowd. That's right. Roaring. That's right. So, uh, so that, that energy level just picked us right up. And so we hit First Avenue, the roar, it was just fabulous. So that was a total high. And interestingly, Joy's crew, her sister and her sister's husband, were out there on First Avenue. What a perfect spot to be in, you know, that's, that's <laughs> when you really need that boost right before you get out. And, and, and the thing is, Joy spotted them. They didn't spot her. He saw them. And they weren't at the spot they agreed on. They were five blocks earlier because, because you know what happens, it gets right. crowded. It's, that's a very crowded area. Anyway, we dash over, quick hugs, and they have Joy's favorite foods, which, that's, you know, gels and a cookie. But the hugging and right. the the main thing. But then you have to keep going, right? Because you can't linger too long. You can't linger too long. And we kept going. And, and First Avenue was fabulous. And, and then uh, there are always some uh, water stations and aid stations, right. so we stopped by those. Mile 18 was the Galloway uh, aid station. So it's like so 90th more, Street? Uh, yeah, 90th, something 90 like that. Something. So okay. we stopped by there, another quick hugs, and you know, I had my potato chips, and then off we, we went. <clears throat> and then the low, about mile 19. So you were in the Bronx by then? No, not yet. Not yet. So right almost, before? Almost. Um, mile 19, uh, we're still in, uh, we're still about maybe 138, I don't know. We're, we're still in Manhattan. She gets a cramp in her, in her calf. Luckily, it was on the wow. side that I was on because she fell on me. So oh, I, I see caught her. Right. And, but she knew exactly what to do with the cramp. You know, she just bent over, put a thumb in it, and all. And, but she was so muttering, you know, oh, I'm done. That's the experience of a runner, you know, when they just know like little tricks that work on their body, you know, like putting that pressure on the, on the calf, as you said. Yes. So, so to, to talk about responsibility, there I had a shift mindset. There I was like a twelve sergeant, you know, okay, run to walk a bit. Okay, okay, time right. to run. <laughs> no, it's. It, I think at that point, you know, in the marathon, it's always like the left side of the brain is telling you, you know, give up. Why are you doing this? You know, sit down. Just well, when you just take the subway back home, right? Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, you know, he, he, you know, he just for a second, he didn't think he was going to, he was out of it. But I said, no. What we need to do is keep going. We just walk, take it easy. And we reached out to other people. A couple of Galloway people were there. We grabbed some salt tablets from them. I mean, so that's the beauty of running, like all the runners go by, you know, they're always supporting each other. So he licked the back of a hand. For sodium. For sodium, for right. the salt tablets to help, you know, re mm -hmm. to get the, uh, the sodium the back up. The electrolytes back in. And then our good friend, uh, Coach Lon Wilson, was there with the sticks. And Coach yes. Lodge sports the biggest smile on the course, right. and he had the stick. So I 
bit like this and Coach Lion rushes over and massages Joy for, oh, for, for that? like 10 seconds because he had, a, he had a run off. Right. And that made all the difference. All the caring, the people around were supporting us. So we just walked a bit. And then and you we, just continued on? Continued on. We just walked and uh, gave us some tips how to hold our arms and to keep our head high, you know, keep the back of the neck elongated and just keep your eyes like a focused. a lighthouse, right? You yes, to be yes. And keep lighthouse. your eyes focused ahead, you know. Take advantage of, uh, of Tai Chi principles, you know, being focused. And so that's what we did. We stayed focused and... It's very uh, chi running, right? Well, yes. this, this time was chi walking. Chi walking. <laughs> very good. Did you see any, any other relatives uh, on Fifth Avenue as you were coming down? No, you know, her sister is also in her 80s and her husband in her 80s. Somehow they managed to get into Central Park. So the next time we saw them, we were entering, mm -hmm. we entered into New Skate. Right. And now we're running, By 19th Street. Uh, we're running uh, in Central Park. And there again is Faith. Faith is a sister, and Chuck. Where is Waldo, right? Where yeah. we might, and then they'd show up. And they're there, and again, we, we hug and give us the, uh, the goo and That's the water. And how was Joy feeling at that point? Because by then, you're like mile 23, 24, yes, he, right? Yes, he was feeling better. Uh, feeling much better. Uh, she, she was determined to finish. And the walking helped. And, you know, and, the, and the support of the crowd was just enormous. Um, i see seeing her family again for the second time. You know, right. It's a big boost when you see family or friends. Uh, absolutely. It really is absolutely. great. Absolutely. And then, uh, as you know, we exit Central Park and, and we go past the plaza. So Central Park South. So, right, right, Central right. Park South. And then up ahead is the Jumpatron. But right. before we knew it was coming, so before we went, so we checked each other out and make sure there were no snobs. You know. <laughs> <laughs> we right, you want to look good. It's yeah, a big, big screen when you go into the um, Columbus system. <laughs> and then the moment Joy saw the Jumpatron, she started jogging. That's great. She's an inspiration to us all. And I jogged with her. As we jogged, the rest of the way. Now, did at any point in time she did she know where, you know, she was in terms of, you know, improving her time? Because I know in that particular race she improved her time by a we big knew, margin. But when we when we had the uh, before we had the attack of the cramps, right. we were on target to go under six. We were about five forty five pace. Five, that's and so the moment the cramp, you know, we didn't think about the race anymore. We just want to finish and finish, you know, strong and happy. Right. And we accomplished that. And it turns out uh, he still beat her prior year's time about about 50, 50 minutes. Fifty minutes. It's just amazing. I mean, to shave any minutes, you know, you know, seconds. Sometimes people just work, you know, uh, put in incredible amounts of miles. Just well, she that. she did an incredible amount of work for for this particular marathon. Uh, she uh, she worked with uh, Jeff Galloway. I see. And with the Dick Beersley uh, Running School, and and of course they just took her under their their wings and gave her special. Well, she's a megastar, you know, among you know. Runners now, but you know she 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 did uh, speed work. She did something called running up stadium steps. Can you imagine running up stadiums up and down? I take the subway. You know, sometimes I'm out of breath by the time I come upstairs. So, thinking of doing that as a training, I'm not sure about that. That's great. But, you know, what's interesting? I had no idea I was going to write a story. Um, the way the story came about. I belong to the East Midtown Partnership Business Improvement District. Right. And the president, very, very nice guy, Robert Burns, and he's a writer. Right. And, he said, and when, he, when he heard I was going to do New York Marathon, the New York City, he said, hey, you know, consider doing a story about the marathon. Right. And then, with this, and then the two came together. Well, wait a minute, I had this wonderful experience with Joy, so I decided that was the thing to do. Well, I to hope that about. Joy gets to, I know she's, as, as we know, uh, you know, she's on her way in, and we're hoping that she at some point gets to uh, join us. I think she will. <laughs> and wouldn't you know it. Joy, what a pleasure to have you here. How are you? I'm just fine, thank you. So did you just arrive in town? Well, uh, actually, a couple of hours ago, the traffic was unreal. 
And then the taxi cab driver couldn't find you. <laughs> I see. Bless his heart. I well? Told, I told him, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> You're here, and that's what counts, right? <laughs> so which uh, marathon number is this for you? Pardon me? Which marathon number? Well, the number is about 60, but actually the 23rd consecutive New York. So you are officially, by now, a streaker, right? That's correct. So um, it, it takes 20 marathons to be a streaker? I, no, I think maybe... Maybe about 15, I'm not sure. Well, that's still a lot. Well, congratulations to you, 23rd. And that's a consecutive? Um, yes, yes, they have to be consecutive, yeah. That is when, great. When I first was a streaker, um, they gave you um, p a piece of paper that's just like your number and you put it on your back. Right. Well, the first year it happened, my sisters wouldn't let me wear it. They really? Said, no, no, you can't wear it. But since then, I have been wearing it. <laughs> I think that is great. <laughs> well, how are you feeling uh, ahead, of the, uh, ahead of the race? Do I move over? OK. Yeah, I'm, I'm nervous, of course. Mm -hmm. I'm always nervous before a run, whether it's a 5K or a marathon, it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> and what do you attribute that to, like, you know, when you say? I think just doing it, you know that it's a, a really, it's a hard job, especially the marathons. It's not easy. It's interesting that you use that word job. Do you, s do you think of it as a job in the sense that, you know, you do, it's <laughs> like having a full-time job when one trains for a marathon, you know, and I, with your times and... Um, well, the thing is, um, because I'm retired, you know, this is what I do. Right. So it is like, a, you know, yeah. like a full-time job. I'm taking right? care of my house and my garden and everything else. <laughs> I see. Well, I have a question that I really would uh, think that a lot of people would be interested in. We know what you give us, meaning you inspire us and we see you and we like to encourage you, but what does Joy get out of the run? What do I get out of it? I have a lot of wonderful friends like this Will. <laughs> you maybe probably won't want to ever see me again after this experience. <laughs> However, um, and uh, in fact another runner, um, is written up in the, this magazine, uh, the, the next one that just came out, um, who dropped on our track. And actually we gave him CPR and the, the, whole, the whole bit, and he's living to tell about it today. There's a lot of, a lot of things you do for one another. For, and just the visiting on the track in the morning we solve all the problems in Sacramento and in Washington, and uh, they never ask us, but we know we've got them solved. <laughs> There's just a lot of good things about it. Friendships. What gets you through when you go, again, you know, we all get to that point in a marathon where you're like, why am I doing this? So what gets you through that period? You know? Sometimes it's difficult. It's, it's true. Um, Will helped me that one time, really with salt, because I was obviously depleted. But um, some of us have mantras. I have my mantra that I, that you know, and the and it was interesting when uh, uh, Ryan Hall won the marathon trials here in New York City. Yes, we were there. I was there at that finish. We saw it all. Uh, anyway. Um, Afterwards, somebody asked him, and he said he had a mantra. And it's ironic, it's the same one that I have. They that w wait upon the Lord, that one. Yeah. Right, I know he's very religious. So, yeah, uh-huh. Uh -huh. It really it really is. You should mount up it on wings as eagles, you know, and, and that's the way you feel. And then you shall w run and not be weary. You shall walk and not faint. Wow, that's yeah. wonderful. Mm -hmm. I heard a part of a hymn recently that's called Leave It There. Uh -huh. And the part that I remember was really interesting is that um, it says, take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. That's true. You know, and I just think that regardless of mm -hmm. what religion one is in. Or another people who, who lose sleep about a certain thing. Right. Um, you you give your problems to the Lord because he's going to be up all night anyway. <laughs> but, you know, um, unfortunately, we're running out of time. Yes, I, um, I know that. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. But, uh, but uh, you know, as a last um, hurrah <laughs> before you run, what would you like people to know about you right before you start the race? Like, how would you like them to greet you? 
Oh, I don't know, just joy, happiness. Enjoy the day. It's going to be a great day, even if it's pouring rain. That's how I feel about it. That's yeah. a wonderful thing to end. Well, thank you very much for joining us. And Will, thank you for uh, well, Thank you for being a terrific here. substitute host. Well, this is, <laughs> it's great to have you. It, ha it has happened sometimes. You have to have a substitute. <laughs> yes, and you have to be prepared for anything that comes, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Plan B. I was a teacher. We always had Plan B. That's right. I'm ready for my Plan B on Sunday, too. <laughs> so, Excellent. Great. Excellent. I wish you both excellent runs. Oh, thank you. Thank Rob. you. <laughs> Glad you made it, Joy. I yes. am too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Will. <laughs> yeah.